Hi there and welcome to the solar update for June 2023 and what a month it's been the best month ever but before we get into the stats let's just remind ourselves of my solar panel system uh, so 14 Jinko 390 watt panels uh, totaling 5.4 kilowatts 10 on the south and 4 on the east and a solar edge 4 kilowatt inverter so that's the solar side. On the battery side, we've got the three kilowatt AC inverter and the eight kilowatt Gen 1 Give Energy battery. And then of course, I've got a few extra bits and bobs such as the My Energy Eddy heating the hot water, the Harvey and the Herb, and the Hypervolt EV charger. So June 2023, the best month we've ever had so far. Uh, they did say on the news that it was the, you know, the warmest month of the year for a long time um and that's helped out with the solar to be honest obviously the sunnier and warmer it is the uh well not always warmer but the sunnier it is the better the system production is so this month 835 kilowatt hours uh, i've never topped 800 before i've never gone over 800 and now we're well into it with 835 so it was a pretty good month several days here over 35 and a lot of them kind of over 25, I'd say more than three quarters of them. Just the odd bad day, and I say bad day, if this was if this was a day in winter, you'd be really happy. But the worst day of the month was 11.1. Uh, you know, not too bad, really. Topped the battery up still and ran the house on that easily. And then 12 and 13. And then just over 15, really. 16, 16. 16 on these other days really and then then you're going really all the way up to 21 so it has been a really really good month and we're looking at about an average of about 27.8 kilowatt hours per day for june so i can only compare this to last year's really because i only had a, a couple of years of junes now and you know last year 783 and this year 835 so you know a good kind of 50 kilowatt hours difference and next month in july was 785 so that was really similar to uh, the previous years in 2022 so i'm wondering if it's going to go above 800 again next month but we'll have to wait and find out uh, so as you can see it's just been coming up slowly during the year as the year progresses uh, and we've just got a couple of months left now of these high values before it all starts dropping away again so how have we used all this lovely solar power? Well, other than it going into the house and the battery and heating the hot water, I also put as much as I can into the EV. And this month in June, uh, 172 kilowatt hours. Now, this there was no, uh, hardly any of this went in overnight on go. I don't think we used go overnight at all, actually, this month. Um, so it was all charging from solar. So 172 kilowatt hours in June. Uh, that would be during the daytime when my car's here normally and at the weekends when my wife's cars are here as well. So this is the My Energy dashboard. Uh, this shows me how much power was used by the Eddy to heat the house hot water. Don't use the boiler in the uh, summer months. Uh, just heat the hot water through solar using the Eddy. So 156 kilowatt hours was used uh, by Eddy from the solar panels. Uh, during June and there wasn't really a day when it kind of didn't get anything um, except for this day here by the looks of it which was the 6th of June that must have been a really bad day weather wise otherwise all of the other days have had a pretty good uh, number of kilowatt hours from Eddie during the month so 156 divided by 30 gives us an average of the, the Eddie taking 5.2 kilowatt hours or using that per day to heat the hot water so now we're in the uh, Give Energy uh, dashboard on the cloud. This is just showing you what my battery uh, took and the AC inverter. So for the month of June, solar to battery was 175 kilowatt hours. If we divide that by 30, that's an average of 5.83 kilowatt hours per day going to the battery. So it's an eight kilowatt hour battery. So that means that there was always some left in it the next day and it just got topped up after that and the grid to the battery 11.87 so there was a little bit that was brought in 
um, to actually top up the battery. I did top up the battery a couple of times this month just when I was worried that there wasn't going to be any solar um, because the days look really dark and rainy. Um, a couple of times that kind of wasn't required, but it's so cheap on Octopus Go at 7.5p uh, per kilowatt hour anyway. I think at the moment it's 9.5 if you're a new customer. But uh, for, a, you know, for 10, 20, 30 pence, it's usually safer to put a little bit in the battery overnight on cheap rate if you're worried about the weather the next day. Although usually in June, you don't have to be kind of too worried about it. But when the uh, electrical peak rate is 40 pence an hour, it kind of makes sense to uh, just put a few kilowatt hours in there if you need to. So the red parts on this uh, graph do actually show where I would have put a little bit in there, like 1.92 and a couple of times um, during the month here. I put a little bit more in as well uh, and a few there as well at the end. So we're now in the uh, Octopus Energy dashboard seeing how much I've used, I've imported from the grid on the electricity. Now this graph should really mirror what I just showed you on the uh, Give Energy battery about how much power I actually brought into the battery from the grid and it does kind of match up. So the first day six and four and then very little just from the battery kind of ramping up and ramping down where you might use a little bit of grid power. And then a couple of days in the middle of the month and then the odd little bit at the end of the month where I uh, imported a little bit because I thought it was going to be a bad weather day the next day. So for the month of June, uh, I imported 35.83 kilowatt hours in total. And that would be a mixture of the daytime peak rate on Octopus Go and the overnight cheap rate. And I'll break that down for you when we have a look at the numbers in a minute. So this is how much I exported during the month. Some days more than others, obviously, depending on whether we were here or not and how sunny it was. Some days we exported 10 and 11 uh, kilowatt hours when we were out. Uh, 7654, you know. But some days hardly anything towards the end of the month so the beginning sort of three quarters of the month was a lot better than the last week i must admit so for the month of june where are we 135.4 kilowatt hours were exported uh, very similar to may's actually 135 135 the month before uh, we did do a little bit more in april i think because we were on holiday um yeah not too bad really we've used still a lot of the power of the 800 odd kilowatt hours we've got in only 135 were actually exported something i take a look at every month is if the battery ran short in the evening and i had to pay full price uh, peak rate electricity because it ran short uh, this month it didn't happen so i look at any data between 8 p.m and 12 30 a.m when cheap rate starts again at 12.30 a.m. for me on Octopus Go. And basically there was nothing really there between 8 p.m. It's never gone or emptied out before 8 p.m. for us. Um, but that data that, that it did bring up was 1.2 kilowatt hours, which is at 40.1 pence, which equaled 49 pence in total. But I believe that was just the ramping up and ramping down and the delay of the battery sort of kicking in and things for the whole month really between that time. So some numbers for June 2023 as billed by Octopus Energy. For the grid import during the day, we imported 8.86 kilowatt hours at 40.13 pence per kilowatt hour. So that equaled £3.55. And during the night time on go, we used 26.97 kilowatt hours at 7.5 pence. Uh, that equaled £2.02. And, two pence. and we exported 135.4 kilowatt hours at the ridiculous, ridiculously horrible 4.1 pence on Octopus Outgoing, although I am considering moving to uh, Scottish Power if I stay on Go or Intelligent, uh, and that equaled £5.55. So the electric spend was 5 57 in total, minus the £5.55, uh, left us with a bill of two pence for the electric. Uh, not including the standing charges, which I'll have a look at the minute. So still not bad. I mean, it covered the heavy, covered the whole house um, and it heated our hot water and we put a fair bit into the uh, EVs as well. So I'm not really complaining, but obviously I could have had a little bit more uh, money for the outgoing if I'd gone to uh, a different rate 
on my seg. I usually include the gas as well, but this month we didn't use any. I've done a meter reading and we don't use gas at all because the heating's not on and the hot water is heated by the solar via the eddy. So if we want to have a look at standing charges as well, so the total gas bill was nothing. The electric was two pence, but of course, standing charges. The gas is 26.84 pence a day times 30 days. Gives us eight pounds and five pence. And the electric at the moment for us is 37.65 pence a day. Times that by 30 days and you get 11 pounds and 30 pence. So the electric bill, the two pence added to the 11.30 gives us 11.32, of course. And zero added to the eight pound and five still gives us eight pound and five pence for the standing charge. So if you add all of that together, our total uh, utility bill for the gas and the electric for the month of June was 19 pounds and 37 pence. Now, obviously, if I was getting paid a bit more for the export, I probably would have been able to cover the standing charges as well. So that's it. That was June 2023. Tune in next month for July 2023. Let's hope it's even better than this month. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please do leave a comment below. Tell me about your system and how it got on. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, of course, and I'll speak to you soon.